Good evening, everybody. My name is Henrik, and welcome to our DMU Talks, um, sort of mini series where we discuss all things related to university. So tonight we will be discussing blended learning and how it really works. Now, you might be wondering, what even is blended learning? And as you're fully aware, obviously, COVID-19, the big thing that we're all living through at the moment um, has meant that a lot of things have to change, and that's obviously applied to university as well. So the academic year at DMU has been pretty different to what it has been in the past. It's definitely different to what it was like when I was at university. But what DMU have done to combat that is introduce a blended learning approach. And now what that just means is that there's a mixture of on-campus um, studying, on-campus activity, and some remote learning from either the comfort of your own home or something similar to that. Um, so what we're going to do today is just have a chat about how blended learning works in, uh, in practice. And we've got a few students that we have to discuss their, you know, their current situation, their current experiences as they are going through blended learning themselves. So just to introduce the students that will be joining us today. First, we do have Amir. Hello. Hi, uh, how are you doing? I'm all right. Uh, uh, just to introduce myself, I'm a third year student studying accounting and finance here at Devon for University. Cool. And what year are you in, Amir? That third year. And where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Worcester. Okay, so not not too far, but you know, not... you've still had to to move away, I guess. Yeah, I've I've moved into student accommodation for this year for like my final year. Uh, last year I was on my own, and in my first okay. year I was living in student accommodation um, in Liberty Park, which was provided by the university. Cool. So student accommodation is definitely something that we'll be touching on in a short while. Um, next, I'm just going to bring to screen Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca, Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Hi, good, so good. my name's Rebecca and I am a third year psychology student, but I'm actually on a placement right now with De Montford University as a careers and placements assistant for our faculties of health and life sciences and art design and humanities currently. Okay, cool. So that's super interesting, actually. So we have to touch on what it's like to actually work in a sort of office environment in the midst of a pandemic. So we'll be able to get your your, your sort of experiences on that as well, which would be really, really useful. And finally, we've got Dennis. Hey everybody, Hi, Dennis. my name is Dennis. I'm from the beautiful Twin Island Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, which is located <laughs> in the Caribbean. I'm a first year um, PhD student at the Buffett University where I'm doing my research in aviation, looking at Caribbean um, aviation, looking at the environment, all those good stuff, yeah. Oh, wow, super interesting, cool. So we've got a, a good mix, um, a lot of different sort of education backgrounds from all over the place. So yeah, it'd be really good just to talk about our experiences today. But just before we do go into your personal experiences, we're gonna quickly plug um, the DMU Futures, um, which is obviously a part of DMU. It's a dedicated web page that has information for applications and relates to all things to do with um, your safety on campus, in your lectures and that kind of thing. Uh, during COVID-19 and do just before I do do carry on as well please if you've got any comments um, please do share them with us we'll try our best to answer them as we go through or at the end of this stream today so first things first um, just want to quickly talk about the um, the blended learning module which is a module that you as students would have had to complete um, you know, during the pandemic this year, just sort of get give you an understanding of how things are going to be, ensure all your safety, just to let you guys know what you get yourself into within a blended learning environment. Um, so this is called Your DMU Future. It's a three-hour module um, that is to be completed in separate segments. Uh, the mini module includes guidance on support services, time management, different modes of online delivery, and a worksheet where students can assess their level of competency with blended learning and also things to discuss with their personal tutor. So have you all, does that all sound sort of familiar? Is that something you've done? Um, Maybe. I'm, <laughs> going to, I'm going to admit this right now. I have yeah. heard of it, but I never even yeah. touched, I never even touched upon it. It was because I think I already, I think I got, I think the thing is, I think my faculty, they went in, they did a lot of detail as to how everything was going to work. And there was like a lot of communication coming from my faculty. So like, I never ended up actually touching the module, but like, if you really are confused, there is that module and it does go into good detail. 
All right, I'm, I'll let you off, Hannah. But obviously, if you can, if you've got time, do go back and maybe revisit that module just so yeah. um, you know you've got something to to look at into that. Um, so just sort of how we're going to do this today is just going to be like an open format. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, and you can all chip in. You can all talk about your experiences. Uh, I'm not going to sort of single any of you out. If you want to answer it, just go ahead and answer it. But just before we start, and just to sort of get a feel for, you know, COVID, it's impacted all of our lives. In general, how have you felt about the, the the pandemic itself? If anyone wants to sort of, I know that's pretty broad, pretty personal, but I guess it's a, a fairly good place to start. Then we want to take that one. Sure. Um, I, I guess that. Okay. Go ahead. After you. After you. <laughs> after you. All right. Um, for me, I think it's been it's been a roller coaster, especially being an international student, um, where you don't really have any sort of family here in the United Kingdom. It has been an experience definitely especially being from lockdown finishing my master's at dmu and being doing my entire dissertation every single thing in lockdown coming straight down to starting my research my phd um in lockdown again it, 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 it definitely has been a roller coaster but there has been some good little things coming out of it where now i'm realizing um how impactful technology is to us um especially as students it's just not for us to just go and scope us our google scholar just to do work but there are so many other different softwares that we can utilize and so many different platforms that are out there that we can utilize to actually be better students so i think that's one of the the, the plus that is that, that come out of the entire pandemic yeah. Cool, Amir, I think you were going to you want to chip in with something. Yeah, I have talked a lot about my uh, lockdown experiences. Um, I think I do like I, I, um, uh, with um, with I think in, during lockdown, I was I'm a part of Demon FM and like the whole, uh, we had our whole station closed down because everything at university had to close when the lockdown was announced. And so like there was a lot of changes. So we had to we started our own part podcast like a lockdown special po podcast that we were doing over lockdown like every week we had like some new stories some segments and just like it was like it was generally a roundup of the week um so i like and then i also found that i had a lot of free time as well because there was nothing to do like you couldn't go anywhere and i i could i just could just um, catch up on some work i could do, try new things like baking baking um I, when i went home uh, when when lockdown initially started my fam my family uh more family got into gardening literally it was just new things i was trying during lockdown essentially yeah definitely and rebecca am i right in presuming that you started your placement year in the middle of the pandemic Yes. Um, so for me, I started my job in August. So I had all of my induction and um, all of my training online, actually. Um, this year has definitely been a roller coaster, much like Dennis said, because obviously we got sent home in March of this year, um, which was quite um, abrupt. And then it went through, like, obviously exams online. I applied for a lot of jobs and a lot of placements, got accepted. They got uh, declined because of COVID. Um, so when I got this job, it was a huge shock and um, it meant that I had to travel all the way from my hometown, which is near London. I'm from Luton and I had to move back up to Leicester quite unexpectedly. So it was quite a big um, jump in that sense. So it's been quite interesting, obviously starting a full time job, considering I haven't had a full time job before. It's been really like different, especially considering it's been online, but it's been really interesting and I've had a lot of really good support. Yes. No good, and I can I can sort of empathise with you as well. Um, I actually started the role I'm in now in the middle of uh, the pandemic as well. I, I rejoined a team that I'd worked in previously, but it was also you know pretty weird. Um, you know, quite luckily I knew the team, so I already felt pretty comfortable embedded in. But you know, you don't have that interaction of going to an office, that sort of stuff. It's all done through through you know conference calls and that kind of thing. And it is it is a little bit it is a little bit weird, but I think we're all probably kind of used to it now. Um, did each of you feel prepared? So I know obviously, did you expect lockdown to sort of happen the way it did? Did you ex expect to be, you know, potentially sent home? Did you expect things like blending learning to happen? And did you feel prepared for it? Um, I expected it. <laughs> um, 
with, with, with the blended learning, um, I think it was kind of easy to move into it. Um, due to the fact that we, almost all of us, we use DMU replay, the blended learning type of stuff was almost very, very similar. Not even almost. It was very similar to DMU, DMU replay. So all the thing, all, the only difference was is that you're actually not going into the classroom uh, for major, major teaching. But in some instances, you actually have to go into the classroom where the classroom, the class size is small. So it wasn't really that much of a big um shock to be honest it wasn't really and truly that hard um to move into that type of blended learning type of um environment because we already have the dme replay which actually was a good kickstart for a lot of us um to do the online learning dennis you just mentioned dme replay just for our audience can you just let you know can you just give a little bit of an insight into what dme replay is and how maybe you used it during your studies Okay, so DME replay is just a recording of your lecture. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> that's, that's so even if you miss the lecture, even if you're studying and you just want to go over something, you can just replay the lecture. And you find this on Blackboard. Um, what the other part of the question was again? It was what it is and how I used it. I think yeah, it have you used it? Okay, yeah. Oh, with the latter part. Okay. So for yeah. my masters, coming off of my masters up in March, it was just using DMU replay, um, coming straight down to explain concepts. And the good thing about it is that um something I didn't even realize that but with DMU replay and you also have um I always can't pronounce this word, it's panapoto or something like that. Whatever that's called. Panata? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that <laughs> It splits up the, the 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 lecture, so it, it actually um what do you call it? Same post it into the different things that they are talking about. So if you, if you're talking about ten different topics, it actually same post. Well, from this to this, we're gonna be talking. Let's say for example, we talk about animals. It'll say from one minute down to five minutes, we're talking about zebra. From five minutes down to ten minutes, we're talking about elephant, and that's something that I had really really liked because it allowed me to actually follow closely. And even if I had to um, listen over something that I missed, I could just skip over to that part instead of saying, just pressing, oh gosh, where it is I supposed to listen to? So that was something that I really, really liked about the, about the software. And it's actually very easy to use. Yeah, great, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a super useful tool. Um, I graduated in 2017 from DME and I don't really think, I think it only pretty much just been introduced um DMU replay so I don't really get to use it but you know I would have been more inclined to do some of my lectures from my bed if that was you know something I had no I'm joking but um yeah they're super useful you can always watch back on everything and the same even when things do go back to normal DMU replay is something that's been there it's going to stay if you need to watch back on any content during your revision preparing for exams course by that kind of thing it's a really useful tool that you'll have um to go in and to go back and look at all that sort of stuff um so I guess next sort of question will be um what has the experience been like what's the teaching experience been like so far for for each of you um okay i'll take this one um so it's been a bit different it's been completely different they've re they've done a whole they've changed how you how you've been taught so um for in my course you have like um we have something called a weekly planner and it, ha it has a set list of activities that you need to go through. So like, it'll say your lecture material, and then you'll say go over recording one or something, and you'll have to listen to the entirety of that recording and make some notes, and then they'll say, oh, then can you now go on to activity two, and then maybe do a little bit of an exercise. And then once you've completed all your lecture activities, they'll then bring you up, and then you'll be ready for the seminar for that week, essentially. So mm -hmm. it, I think like the like teaching has has changed but in a in a good way because it's um you still have your let you still have your lectures but you, you you still have the same element of a seminar where if you're online or whether you're face to face you can still have you can still ask questions about anything you're unsure about uh, from the material you've just been given and do you have access to things like material and lecture notes and all that kind of stuff yeah so i have like lecture slides They'll have like a weekly planner and they'll also have the seminar questions for the week as well. Um, and as well, I think that we can even just email our um, email our uh, seminar tutors 
or um, arrange an appointment with them. They have they still have their like feedback hours, but like obviously with COVID, they had to like formalize the process so you can book an appointment online during that time. But even then, they've had like the, they've always had that open door policy as well. Uh, if you um, if you have a question, you can give them e- give them an email, and they'll be able to respond back to you within a set mm-hmm. period of time whenever they're free, basically. Cool. And Dennis, you're doing your research. Yeah, yeah. Now, I how, how does that how's that been impacted during all right? Going on? Uh, to be quite honest, I think finding the motivation has been very hard because it's like you're working from home, you're not even on campus. And I think that's that's something that's been very hard for all of us, to be honest. Um one of the good things is that I get to meet with my supervisors every single week. We meet online via MS Teams, and that's another software that the university uses for different um, activities. So we meet on MS Teams every single week where we actually discuss the research. Um, I have to do a lot of independent reading on my own, um, and that is quite hard because <laughs> you know you're living in an environment where your bed is just right there it's legit right there and it's like to actually get us a bit and just be like hey you really need to go and do some reading so it's kind of hard um in terms of the different training exercises that the doctoral college has been having all of them are online and they're actually very simple um to say that far you just basically using the same ms teams to do all of the training um maybe just like a couple of days before so you're going to be sent um, the material that we're going to be looking at. So you just read through it um, before the actual session. And you're even given like a schedule of all of all the training sessions that will be happening um, during this whole pandemic period that you can actually go and sign up for on Eventbrite, I think it is. Yeah, Eventbrite, I think it is, where you just go and, and sign it up. So that that's how it is in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell. Oh, and another good thing is that every... Um, I think it's every two weeks or every three weeks, something like that. We have like a catch up session with the dean of the different faculties, uh, for research. So I feel like that's something that's very, very good. We're able to just say exactly what challenges that we're being faced with. It's a good place for us to actually go and get some sort of like, um, um, encouragement from other research students as well. Cool. Now that's super useful. Thank you for that. Um, and Rebecca, so you are doing your placement during, um, you, well, you started placement during the pandemic, you said it's your first sort of full-time time job. You're in a similar position to me, so you're, I guess you're working from home at the moment. Yeah, um, I am working from home at the moment. I did work on campus for about a month, um, but obviously with the news of the second lockdown, it was back into remote working again, so I am here from my bedroom, sadly. My bed's over there and um, this is um also my office at the same time so I work um pretty much nine to five Monday to Friday I still have some university work that I have to do um I have a lovely 4,000 word essay that is due in a good couple of months but other than that I am working full-time for the university and how are you finding sort of working from home because for me personally it is a it's a little bit different and um, you know you're sort of working maybe you're eating you're relaxing in the same sort of parts of your house which can be a little bit weird you know whereas obviously if you're in the office you know you're at work you come home and you can sort of shut off that's something I may be struggling with a little bit is you know sometimes it's quite difficult to sort of motivate yourself and sometimes it's quite hard to shut off how are you finding sort of you know I really yeah I really agree it's really difficult the lines between kind of work and playtime get so blurred um especially if you're someone who's living in like a shared house like I am um I could work downstairs in the kitchen but I have to sit and do confidential meetings and you know it's just noisy and there's people coming in and out and you know people making food so it's really difficult um to try and get that motivation so what I'd like recommend to other students is just like if you can try and not work in your bedroom because it does make it a lot harder if you have the opportunity but at the same time you can power along and do it it's just you know you have to kind of steal yourself up a little bit more which is um interesting the motivation in the mornings is horrible (laughs) no I fully agree and like you said it's you know you you, you're trying to do meetings and you know I've got a quite a noisy um little dog um she's behaving herself tonight luckily but you know speak to my colleagues she's normally barking during these streams but touch has been okay tonight and it's things like that you know variables that you can't really control they're some of the things that you sort of have to 
um, you know, try and combat, which make things a little bit more difficult. Um, just before we carry on, we do have a question in the comments, um, which says, um, will the campus be open in February? Um, to be honest, um, I th I don't, we're not too sure. Um, obviously, um, we're playing everything sort of, you know, day by day, taking everything day by day. Um, the restrictions and the government guidelines change, um, you know, on the daily basis as well with the news of the vaccine, that kind of thing. Who knows? But just keep an eye on uh, on everything. Um, we do have um, some virtual um, open days coming up. So the open days are still going to be run virtually. So you can have a chat in, you know, a format, something similar to like what we're doing tonight here. So um, there's one of those in December. There's one in January, um, probably in February too. So for the time being, um, we aren't we aren't too sure, to be honest. Um, but it's just something to keep an eye on. Most people in, you know, in a similar boat. So it's just a case of we'll take it each day as it comes. Um, so sort of back to to campus and that kind of thing. Have any of you actually been onto campus? Yeah. yeah. And how you find? How is it? Is it is it like a ghost town? Is it a bit weird? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really strange. It's so quiet, especially from like professional side um I w I'm based in one of the careers offices in Cleppen building for art design and humanities that's where I'm based and probably over a month period I probably saw like two students socially distanced of course um but yeah it was so strange because my job is working with people and I saw two other than my colleagues of course that I was in a bubble with so it's definitely very very strange on campus it's very quiet right now yeah, especially considering obviously where DMU is, it's so close to the town. There's normally, you know, quite a lot of traffic of just the, the general public sometimes walking through. And is that just, I mean, I've not been onto campus since, because well, I, when I rejoined the job, I've not been on campus since sort of December time. Uh, so it's been a long, long time. Um, I mean, is it, yeah, even the library, stuff like that, is it all just very, very quiet, very? Oh, very quiet. Yeah. Very oh. quiet. Like if you go in there, maybe in the morning or in the afternoon, it's, it's literally just quiet and there's not a lot of people in there and even if you do i had a friend who went to on campus today and there's that and you have to like anyway and you have and it was like a group of four people because they had like a group presentation to do there's not a lot of people and it's very spaced out as well so it's very limited as to when you can access the library as well because you have to book you have to book in advance to even access the library to ensure mm -hmm. social distancing as well okay i know that's that nicely transitions us on to our next point or my next question which is you know if you have been on campus when you have been on campus things like the library you know have you felt safe and what social distancing what covid safe measures are in place oh yeah there's a lot of things in place when you mm. when you come to campus like deem you safe trace um we have to social there's like specific seating areas like one great example is um our fm studio where we've where there's a lot of measures that we've had to put in place in order to keep our uh, radio station o open. So that's like our society's um, uh, radio station. And at the moment, we can only have two pe two presenters or so two people who can go on air and one producer in the studio at any one time. And they must clean the entirety of the desks when they enter the studio and before they leave the studio as well. And then have then there's hand sanitizers and even a separate QR code. So it just it just tells you we, there's a lot of measures in place to ensure that everybody is safe on campus. Mm -hmm. And even in business and law, because that's my faculty, faculty of business and law, and I had about two face-to-face -face meetings with my supervisors. Um, in Bell, everybody know Bell building is always filled with students, always filled with students. Um, it is very empty, very, very empty. And there is a one-way system that is in place and it is um, the signage all over. There's only one person per, um, per elevator. You're only one person you can go into the elevator. So I've been using the stairs quite a lot, you know, getting in the, the, that little exercise, <laughs> right? Uh, even even what, what Amir was saying about the DMU trace. Now, as soon as you go into the classroom, you have to just, you know, scan yourself. And even now, I know they've updated it to include your seat and desk number as well. So they're really trying to keep on top of contact tracing. 
Um, there are a lot of different hand sanitizing um, stations, especially as soon as you walk into different buildings. Um, in the event that you need like some sort of assistance, because I've had to go to the advice center a lot just to get some stuff sorted out. Um, always wearing a mask in there. Um, there's also the, fle the plexiglass. Is flexi or plexi? The plexiglass. The plexiglass, yeah. Plexiglass, yeah. yeah. They have just protecting them and protecting the students as well. And they also have on um, the mask as well. So there are definitely a lot of things that are in place. Sounds good. Yeah, it does sound like there's a lot of um, obviously safety measures in place. And they're probably going to be here for a good little while as well. Um, I mean, you know, it, it all felt pretty, pretty strange at the beginning. But I mean, like I've already said, it's pretty like a second age now, isn't it? All this stuff, you know, sanitize your hands whenever you go and scanning the QR code, wearing your mask, that kind of thing. It's all just, you know, it's become the um, the sort of new norm, I suppose. Um, OK, so we've got just a couple more questions. Um, so between the three of you, are, are any of you living in accommodation at the moment? Yes. Okay, Amir, how have you found living in accommodation during um, during COVID-19? It hasn't been any different as the first year, to be honest. I mean, there's a lot of things in place. So the reception has their flexiglass up in, uh, uh, up in the front, but like other than and thermal wearing social distancing. But to be honest, there's not, there's not any difference. Like I'm still living with a group of people we're like considered one household bubble and yeah, it's all been great. It's like, it's like this, it's like the same as first year as if we can't go out and you can't do anything like that. So, um, and I'm still doing, and I'm doing a lot of things from home, which, which I know is, uh, I should know it can get, is hard to get used to, but like, I think what I found is like having a good morning routine does help get, get you into the, get you into like, um, you're doing work, getting into studying, getting into doing what you need to do, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so to all of you as well, sort of what social impact has um, has the virus had on, on, on you? Um, so for me, it's honestly a little bit different because obviously I am working full time. So it's removed, I guess, in a sense from typical student life. So in a social um, terms, I I don't really talk to very many people, um, which is kind of sad. I have my housemates who are all students, um, mm -hmm. which is really nice. They're all third year, so they're very, very busy. Um, but a lot of my time is spent at my job. Um, so in that case, it's a little bit harder. Um, but I think with working life, things are a little bit different anyway. You become a lot more you have a lot less time anyway. So I spend a lot of my time just doing other things in my free time. So I don't really have the chance to be lonely. There's always too much laundry to be done um, in that sense and other things to do. But with uh, the social aspect on the other side, like our societies are still going on. There's a lot of like online courses, um, DME Global. We've got a lot of stuff going on there at the moment, which I've been keeping myself busy with and also like family and friends. Um, so in all honesty, I think it would be very much the same anyway, because I would have been in third year if I wasn't doing a placement and it's quite intense. So I'm not a huge, um, you know, party person or someone who goes out a lot, maybe in first year, but I feel like I'm a bit old for that now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to what you said about the, um, the societies, a lot of societies are having online events. Um, for example, one of the societies I'm part of, Caribbean Society, we had a movie night slash game night the other day where we linked one, we linked all our Netflix together into a Netflix party and we just watch a movie, um, followed by some some a few games that we played afterwards, like stuff like that. Lots of societies are just taking, they're having their events, but it's just online. And even though it's online, it's still as good as if it was face-to-face, -to, -face, to be honest, yeah. Yeah, because my next question was going to be, you know, have you managed to keep in contact with, you know, family and friends? I mean, Dennis, especially for someone like yourself, obviously going to be super important. You know, how have you managed to do that? Has it been, you know, just purely online? Um, okay, for me, um, with my family, it's just been online. Um, just a lot of video chatting, a lot yeah. of 
what's happened. Um, here in Leicester, I formed a bubble with one additional person. So at times, you know, we do meet, we do meet up just to have a little chit chat here and there. Um, but we just formed a bubble amongst our own selves. So that's a good thing because we don't really interact with anybody else because we're home all day, every day. 24-7. So farming that addition, farming that one bubble is, is, is kind of good for your mental health as well, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I think definitely super important at the moment. I mean, we're going through really quite strange times. Um, you know, not a lot of people are going to be used to anything like this. Like nothing we've ever experienced before. Um, it will impact people's mental health. So it's really, really important to, you know, still have that social interaction have conversations, speak to your mates, that kind of thing, if you're ever feeling a little bit low. Um, and, you know, sometimes I think it's okay to feel, you know, a little bit demotivated at the moment because, like you, like we've all said, you're stuck at home, that kind of thing. It's okay um, to feel a bit, you know, a little bit a little bit lazy. But if you can go for a walk, speak to your friends, try to do a little bit of exercise, that kind of thing, it's all going to make you feel better in the long run. Um, so just sort of coming up to our sort of final question now, Dennis, you've already touched on um, being part of the Caribbean Society and you've, um, you know, you've, you've, you've watched some movies together, have played some games, that sort of thing. So Rebecca or Amir, have you done any sports or society stuff yourselves? Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of what I do, um, I have, uh, have Nintendo Society and we normally have like, uh, as it is, we just do some game nights. So on Tuesday nights, we tend to do uh, a Smash Brothers sort of, um get together or mario kart or something like that and then on thursday night to actually get a lot more people involved because we realized that not a lot of people like people who attend our societies face to face last year didn't have a nintendo switch or any nintendo console so we've decided like using pc games so like um among us for example a lot of people might have a pc version of that or the or they can get the free version on their phones or tablets so we can get everybody involved um, and I think other things I've done are um, Demon FM. That uh, I think this is the only one exception as to where we have our own studio open and we get to have a little bit of face to face time uh, doing a lot of social distancing. And as I explained with the studio before, I still get to do some shows. So on Monday nights, I do a home, I produce a home run show and then I host my own show called In Focus where we just discuss about the topics during the week. like key topics that we debate on which we feel that are important and then on um our friday night we have like a game night show which i produce uh for six to seven o'clock like I, I still get a chance to go out but not as not as much as i it's a lot of the things online but it doesn't take away from the fact that there's a lot of so there's a lot of people there's like a lot of things you can still do online yeah definitely no that's really insightful rebecca are you get are you still busy doing anything like that um, not necessarily society based, um, just because when I finish work, I am exhausted. Um, today, actually, I was working. Um, I'm on annual leave tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah long weekend. Um, so societies, I don't I'm not really a part of. Um, I do help run a society. Things are a little bit slow right now because we're all a little bit busy. But we're part of obviously the ambassador society, which, as it sounds, we help um, support and promote the, the university um with more so just what I do is um I tend to go out for a lot of walks I find that to be like helpful clear my head get out of the house me and my housemates exercise a lot um we do a lot of really random things like whatever like holidays coming up we did like pumpkin carving for Halloween um we have stray cats that we play with in the garden um just things that really help you get out of your own head but also just out in the world just because Covid around doesn't mean that the world stops spinning in a sense things are still happening and there's a lot going on um there's a lot of like online internships that are happening at the moment i've taken up a language um and actually despite like everything being so like turbulent at the moment it feels like things are being ripped up under our feet it's actually a really good time to kind of just spend time with yourself and get that inner peace i think with a lot of me i've just been like you know looking at my own life but also just like sorting out things that I've been meaning to do for ages so I think in some senses it's been enjoyable in a weird kind of way I don't know if anyone else feels that no I do get you there like it's been it, it's just been a change of pace and I think it's what I needed to like like um, have more free time to myself to be honest yeah 
No, cool. No, thank you, everybody. And yeah, that was yeah, you make a really good point, record. I mean, um, there's no reason why you can't come out of sort of what I've locked down, you know, whenever it is it is in a, a few months' time potentially. And you know, you've developed new skills, like you said, you learn a language, you know, you've had time for that sort of personal development, personal growth, that kind of thing. You know, use this as a time to to get fit, exercise, walk, you know, there's tons of stuff online, loads of resources. If you want to set up a YouTube channel or you want to become a Twitch streamer, that sort of stuff. There's so much stuff you can do, literally. Just try, keep yourself busy, um, and you'll feel so much better for it. Um, that is pretty much everything we were going to touch on tonight, this evening. Um, do any of you guys have anything you'd like to add? No. 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 That's, that's absolutely fine. It's been super insightful. It's really, I really appreciate getting all your, your opinions. Um, like I said, we're all in a similar boat. Um, but you three seem to be, you know, coping pretty well, actually, which is really good to hear. Um, just as a little bit of a plug, um, we do have a couple streams coming up, so similar to ones tonight. We have one on the 1st of December um, on GMU, wait, sorry, on Student Welfare and Support at University, um, which is super important. And then we have one on the uh, 10th, the Thursday the 10th as well, where we're talking about how to stay motivated during COVID, which is super relevant and um, another, you know, important stream. So if you want to tune into that, um, and then, as we said before, there's a, a series of digital open days that are coming up um, in um, December um, and in January as well. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, and, yeah, appreciate your time. And um, we'll be seeing you again shortly. Thank you. Bye-bye.